And we are looking into the uh, 15th verse of the book of Romans. We are beginning with verse 15 as we will continue to study. Uh, there are a number of things that uh, we will be dealing with this evening. Uh, one of the things of great importance that we'll be dealing with this evening outside of the regular Bible study, but we will be dealing with um, the need for prayer. There are a number of situations that uh, are called to our attention, and one is as a young lady um, by the name of Sister Angela Edwards, I uh, asked to pray for uh, this evening, as well as many others. Uh, we may or may not remember names to all. We're praying uh, for Sister Jackson. We're praying for others that we uh, know that are either uh, in the hospital or in nursing homes or home, or sick, um, those who are undergoing surgeries. Uh, we're praying for families that are dealing with uh, the loss of loved ones. Uh, just uh, a few days ago, a shooting in uh, Uvalde, Texas. And again, this evening, a shooting in uh, the Tulsa, Oklahoma area uh, at a uh, hospital slash clinic. Uh, I'm not certain exactly which building as of now. Uh, four people are dead, uh, including the shooter. We don't know how many people have been injured, uh, but we must be very, very vigilant in our prayer life, and we must always remember to give God a praise. Uh, and I know many times the question comes up, say, what's going on? Well, I want to tell you what's going on. The devil is loose. The devil is busy. The devil is... Uh, on his job. The question is, are we on our job? Are we doing what we need to do? Are we praying as we should? Are we uh, giving God praise as we really should? Do we spend time uh, with the Lord uh, as we ought to? Are we uh, in the word the way that we need to be? And are we really, really serious in our prayer life? Now, being serious in your prayer life, uh, when I'm talking about serious, I'm talking about being seriously involved in praying the way that God say pray. Many times we pray and seriously, but we're not on uh, line with what the Lord say. And so even though you're serious and even though uh, you mean what you say, you're not praying according to uh, the word and showing faith in God, you still lose the battle. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, dear God, for your word tells us, oh God, that if we pray and believe and don't doubt, having faith in God, we have faith of God. We trust God to be all that he say he is and that he is a rewarder of them that did seek him. Father, we thank you, Lord that you teach us through your word, that when we pray to you, we believe and do not doubt. And we pray according to your will, we receive what we ask for. Now, Father, we're asking for peace of mind. We're asking for comfort. We're asking for strength. And Lord, as we get into your word, we're asking, dear God, that you reveal to us, O oh God, the truth of your word, that we will get clarity and understand Oh God, how to apply your word in our lives, that we, Father, can be the people that you have called us to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Again, thank you for joining us this evening for our Wednesday night Bible study. Romans chapter 11, verse 15, is where we began on this first day of June, uh, 2022, Wednesday evening Bible study. We begin in verse 15 of Romans chapter uh, 11. And it starts by saying, if the casting away of them be the rec reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life for, from the dead? 
Now, for if the putting away from God of the Israelites, of the people of Israel, uh, be the reconciling, the bringing close to God, or back to God, the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Now, all of the world was once in harmony with God through Adam. But when Adam disobeyed, all of the world was put in disarray and enmity or made uh, in opposition to God. But now we have Israel, who is God's chosen, a nation that was chosen by God, who is now being talked about as being a cast away, put away from God. So let's look at this. For if the putting away of Israel from God be the reconciling, the bringing of the world back to God, what shall the receiving of them, Israel, be but life from the dead? So then, God will receive Israel. Well, we can get into a lot of discussions about why, how, and when, but where the answer is, is God. And God has a way of doing things that we will never be able to understand. So there are some things that God does that we are not to worry ourselves about understanding, but just accept what God says. But let's look a little farther and we'll get some understanding, but we will never get the fullness of it. Verse 16 says, For if the first fruit be holy. Now, this first fruit be holy is talking about Abraham. The lot is also holy. That's the seed of Abraham, all of the, the descendants of Abraham. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Now, uh, remember now when we look in John, uh, chapter 15, Jesus tells us that he is the true vine and his, his father is the husbandman and we are the branches. And then he goes on to tell us that we can do nothing as branches without the vine. So here the question is, what happens if the first fruit be holy? The lump is all the holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Now in Leviticus 23 and 20, it speaks of the bread of the first fruit as a wave offering before the Lord. Now this offering is an offering that was made under the, the priests and they hold it up before God and call a wave offering. Uh, uh, and, and this is what was done uh, but as we read and understand this, we go farther. So let's go a little farther in verse 17 so we can try to pull this together in the 30 minutes. Uh, actually, we only have about 18 left. And if some of the branches be broken off, if some of the people be removed, re remember now, the branches here, we're talking about Israel. If some of the branches be broken off, if some of the people of Israel be removed and those being a wild olive tree that's Gentiles, a non-Israelite were grafted in among them. Grafted in is a process that farmers or or should I say uh, uh, husbandmen, people who do orchards, uh, who deal with fruit trees, uh, they take a tree and uh, there's a limb that they may cut that limb off. And they take a limb from another. We use the word limb here. They use branches in the scriptures. Same thing. They take that limb and put it onto the end where it was cut off that's still onto the tree, uh, to the vine. And, and, and so we put it on and fasten it there so it will stay there and it will knit itself to the tree. 
In today's uh, way we do it, there's a wax-like substance that is put around it to seal it and then tape around it so that it will hold on and, and it will grow into that uh, tree and become a part of that tree. So not what? Uh, so then being a wild olive tree, we're grafted in among them and with them partakers of the root. So whatever is grafted onto the branches, it becomes a part of the tree. Now, all of the tree draws its substance from the roots. So you get partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. So whatever the olive tree gets, the branches get also. I hope you're, you're following me. So anything that's growing and something else is put on to that which is growing, and it knits itself to that which is growing, it grows with that is attached to. And it draws from that and becomes a part of that. And in this term, the olive tree, which is uh, the body of Christ. But verse 14, now verse, verse 18 here gives some instruction to uh, those of us who uh, have this mindset that I am a child of God because I believe in Christ. And so the Jews who do not believe, uh, they are excluded. Watch yourself. Don't get beside yourself, as old folks say. Verse 18 says, boast not against the branches. But if thou boastest, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. So I remember a Sunday school lesson some time ago, and uh, the teacher was making a point, and, and, and she was right on point with it because uh, she's talking about people who get saved. And sometimes people who are saved, who are in the church, who are actively involved in church, and, and then there are folk who are murderers, and they are in prison, and they get saved. And sometimes we would get upset because that person in prison got saved, uh, murdered uh, someone, and that person they murdered was our relative, somebody we were real close to. But they truly got saved. I'm not talking about people who pretend to play games so they can get out of prison, but they really got saved. So the question was, and it was asking the question like people would who are listening to this teaching would say, you mean to tell me that I'm going to have to share heaven with them if you go? If you go, you will have to share heaven with them because we don't get to pick who will be allowed into the kingdom. So you and I have nothing to boast of. You are not the vine. I'm not the vine. We are branches on the vine. We are not the bearer of the root. The root supplies us. God is the only one that gets to decide. Now, we get to decide whether we accept him or not. But God gets to decide who gets in. But the Israelites turn their back on him. Your back was turned when the gospel was presented to you and you turned to him. So where are you better than they are? Where am I any better than they are? They turn away and the gospel was presented to us and we turn to him. Now by our being turned to him, will provoke them, and many of them will turn to him. 19. Thou will say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Hmm. So then you can say that if the branches were not broken off, then where would I? 
uh, uh, how would I have my, where would I have my opportunity to be grafted in? Because of unbelief, and thou saying this by faith, but thou mind it now. Don't get beside yourself, but have fear. The reverence, reverence, fear. Let's look at Romans twelve and verse sixteen. We have to watch this being high-minded. 12 and 16 say, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. We have to watch. Sometimes we get to thinking that we are more special than anybody else. Sometimes it happens throughout the body from one denomination, folks thinking that I'm more holy than anybody else. I have a right, a front seat with God and nobody else has. But we have to watch it. We have to watch ourselves. Now, let's go to the book of Philippians, uh, chapter 2 and verse 12. But I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Verse 13, so that my bonds in Christ are manifested in all the palaces and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some people see what happened to you. And get strong. So here we have uh, uh, Israel, who uh, have not always obeyed, but they turn. Now let's look at 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 at, at chapter two, verse twelve. Go to chapter two, Philippians two and twelve. Wherefore, my beloved. As ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in the absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2 and 12. You have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. You see, it's, 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 it's not so good that the only time you obey when somebody watches you. You see, you're not being obedient. You're acting out of fear of punishment. But when you obey, when nobody is standing over you, you obey and put forth even more uh, uh, effort when nobody is watching over you in the natural, because God always sees you. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, which means you are busy doing the will of God being obedient to the word of God, by faith, you are trusting God and doing what the word of God say, even though there is nobody standing over you in the physical. Why? Because of your love for God. Well, let's look at that for a moment. Just that statement, your love for God. What does it have to do with it? Well, Faith in God, faith in God uh, brings about your love. You love God. And love brings about obedience. What, what, what are you saying? Because I have faith in God, I trust God, and I learn to love God. And as I learn to love God, I understand that I prove my love to God by being obedient to his word, my faith. I can't have faith in God without having love for God. Why? Because I believe in God through who? His son. My faith in his son. 
when the Lord said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear you him. He said, obey him. Follow him. Trust him. Now, let's look at Hebrews. Uh, let, let, let's, let's go on down to, before, we, before we move. Let's look at verse 13 of Philippians. And then we'll go to Hebrews chapter 13. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to do his good flesh. See, when we are working, uh, doing the will of God, is God working in us? It is not me, but God. So don't try to take any credit for being righteous. God made you righteous. It's God that justified you. It's God that made you right. So be obedient to the word of God, not thinking that it's you. Right? You know, I, 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 I know I'm, I'm walking right with God. I got it all right because I do what the Lord say tell and what the Lord say do. And, and don't nobody else know how to walk with God like me? That's a lie. You just stood up there and, and, and boast about yourself. And the Lord has already told you, don't boast about yourself. You want to brag on something? Brag on Jesus. Hebrews chapter 13. Let's go to verse 20 and verse 21. Now the God of peace that brought you again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. In other words, you didn't do nothing. God did it to you. God used you. God did it through you. He made it happen through you. The same way he brought Jesus from the dead. He worked in you. Now, let's look at verses Back in, in Romans chapter uh, 11, let's take a quick look at verse 21 uh, and 22. Uh, do I want to go there? Not yet. Yeah, let's go there. Verse 20 said, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. I'm going back to 20 to pull it together. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. Why? For, which means because if God spared not the natural branches, the Israelites, take heed lest he also spare not thee. He spared not those he chose from the beginning when they disobeyed. Take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail. Severity, but toward thee. Goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be, what are the last three words I say? Cut off. Well, let's, let's, let's look at it uh, from another translation. Uh, starting with verse 19 through 22 uh, from an English translation. Uh, and it says, well, you may say those branches are broken off to make room for me. Yes, but remember, those branches were broken off because they didn't believe in Christ. And you are there because you believe. So don't think highly of yourself. But fear what could happen. For if God did not spare the original branches, he won't spare you either. Notice how God is both kind and severe. He's severe toward those who disobey, but kind to you if you continue to trust in his kindness. But if you stop trusting, you also will be cut off. Now, what does it mean to stop trusting in God? Because so many people say, I, I trust in God, I believe in God, but do you obey him? See, to trust God is to obey him. 
to obey him is proof of your love for him. And Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Yes, I keep using that scripture from John uh, chapter 14, verse 15, uh, because it applies. And I have to keep using it. If you love the Lord, then you obey him. If you love somebody, you don't have to be made to do what's right. If you really love somebody, they don't have to force you to do what you're supposed to be doing. They just love you and you love them back by showing your love through obedience and doing what you know you're supposed to do. So then let, let's look at this last verse 23. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, be grafted in if or God is able to graft them in again. Now, watch, let me let me clear this. Let's go to the thing and see if you get it. Easy. And if the people of Israel turn from their unbelief, it says, Abide not still in unbelief, turn from their unbelief, they will be grafted in again. For God has the power to graft them back into the tree. So if they turn away from their disbelief to God then God will graft them back in. It is their unbelief that disconnected them. But if they believe, they shall be reconnected. So then we are connected because of our belief. But if we stop being obedient to God and stop believing him because our obedience shows that we trust him, we obey him, then we will be disconnected. Oh my my. So 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 many times people want to declare faith in God, yet live in disobedient to his word. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. If you truly have faith in God, you learn to obey him and you desire to know more about how to live for him that you may walk with him because being justified by him, you shall live by faith. That's trusting completely in the Lord. One quick look and then we're gonna do a prayer from 2 Corinthians chapter three. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Even today, there are many who still have a veil when the word of God is read. Nevertheless, verse 16, when it shall be Turn to the Lord. The veil shall be taken away. Whenever you turn your face to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is a spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So the Lord sets us free from the veil that separates us from him. See, many still believe that they have to go to the high priest, and that the Messiah has not yet come. But I want to tell you, Jesus has come and has returned back to his father. And when he come again, believers, those who truly believe in him, will be happy to see him. But those who do not believe in him will not. And I want to be in that joyful crowd who will be glad to see him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for your word. Now, Lord, help us to understand your word, to apply your word in our life. 
that we, O oh God, will walk in belief, faith in you, O oh God, and that we will pray for those, Father, who do not believe in you, that their hearts will be changed and that they also will believe and be grafted back in. Father, we understand that in order for them to come back in, we don't have to be moved out. You have enough room and your branches are strong enough to hold them also. So Father, in the name of Jesus, touch hearts of unbelievers, whether they be Jews or Gentiles, touch hearts, Lord, that they will turn to you and believe in you and live for you, that we, O oh God, will be able to enter into the kingdom together. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Now, Lord, touch those hearts that are bleeding, those hearts that are saddened, those heads that are bowed down because of heaviness. Oh, Lord, touch right now in the name of Jesus. Those individuals, dear God, who are laying in the hospital rooms, whose bodies are aching with pain, broken and bent and torn, Father, touch right now. For, Lord, we know that you and only you can heal. Heal, Lord. You use the hands of doctors to do some awesome work. But, Father, you are the healer. You, O oh God, are the one to heal. So, Lord, touch right now. Heal broken hearts as well as broken bodies. Heal, O oh God, torn spirits as well as torn flesh. Heal, Lord. Restore, O oh God, salvation as well as sanity. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for victory. Now, Lord, we thank you for a good night's rest. And, Father, while we sleep, we thank you, dear God, that your spirit is at work, healing, delivering, and setting free. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the honor, all the glory, for it's yours, Lord, and we take none for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Uh, have an awesome night. Rest well with your mind on Jesus, and he will keep you in perfect peace, and your sleep will be sweet. And until next time, remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. Good night.